Hi guys, it's Rob here, and I'm back with another tutorial for my uh, Unity playlist. And what I'm actually going to do here is I'm actually going to make a new script. And actually, in this lesson, we're actually going to be going over a get component. So get component is a useful way to access the com a component attached to a game object through the code. So what we're going to do here first, we're going to create a new game object, and we're going to make a cube. Now you'll see this cube comes with a lot of components already. We have its transform component. Now one important thing to note is that a transform component can never be deleted on any off of any game object, and all game objects have to have one. This is how Unity maps the position, rotation, and scale of this game object. Here we have the cube's mesh filter, which controls what mesh is attached to this object. So if we change that to a cylinder there, we'll see we now have a cylinder. Right? So we could change the mesh that is associated with this game object. Quad. Right? But we want to keep it at a cube for now. And there's even none here. But we want to keep it at a cube, so let's keep it there. We have this box collider component, which can be uh, also uh, referenced through the code. And we have this mesh renderer component, and then this default material applied to it. So what we're going to do is we're going to add component, physics, rigid body. Oops. Rigid body. Right? And uh, now I'm actually going to show you here how we can uh, access these components to do some pretty cool stuff using the get component method in Unity. So I'm going to make a new script, create C sharp script, and this is going to be our cube script. So we'll just name that accordingly. We'll double click to open it in Mono Develop. And as you'll see, Mono Develop automatically opens that up for us once we double click. Now I'm going to get rid of these two scripts here just so that I'm left with this cube script here. And next, what I'm going to want to do is I'm going to want to say public game object cube. And if you don't understand why I'm doing that, please watch uh, my tutorial on public game objects. In start here, I'm actually going to say, oh, the other thing I've typed in, let's say rigid body, uh, rigid underscore cube, let's say. And now we want to say box collider. Um, box call underscore cube. What was the other one? Render, right? So mesh render. So mesh render. Mesh rend underscore cube. Right? And now here, I'm going to be using get component to get all these values, and then we'll be able to do some pretty cool stuff with them. So I'm going to say that rigid underscore cube equals cube so this is the game object dot get component so we'll go up here to get now remember not get components get component then in this little these triangle brackets here we're gonna put the type of object we're getting so we're getting the rigid body right off of here so you're like whoa slow down Right, so let me do this a few more times to break this down for you. Right, so I'll do this two more times, and then I'm going to slow it down and show you exactly what's going on. So box call underscore cube equals cube dot get component. It's going to be box collider. And then what I'm going to do here is I'm going to have these little two parentheses. I'm going to hit enter. Mesh rend cube equals. Oh, sorry about that. Cube, cube dot get component. We want the mesh renderer. So the reason I didn't explain this until I put down all three is I wanted you to see a little pattern here. So up here we're making a type of variable, which is the type of our component attached to this cube object. Down here we're use, initializing these variables to the game object dot get component, and then here we have the type in these triangle brackets and then these parentheses at the end here. So now what we could do is first we'll go back first we'll save this, okay? Go back to Unity. Make sure we don't have any errors. Because that's important. We do have some, some warnings though. Uh, that our cube uh, has so th this uh, rigid underscore cube variable is assigned, but the value is never used. 
You'll notice cube script dot this, right? You'll notice that that's referring to the script here, and then the variable contained in that script. And if you watch my public static variables tutorial, you'll know that this is actually a cool way. Uh, this is the way we actually reference a public static variable, but not that these are. Uh, it's just that you type it in the same way. Uh, but anyway, so I don't really want to see these warnings here, so I'm just going to unclick that. Uh, and that's actually from my tutorial on the con Unity console. And But what I am going to show you in this tutorial is a bunch of cool things we could do with this. So once we have this here in update, I want to say mesh rend. I want to make the cube red. So how would I do that? I would say mesh rend underscore cube, our variable here, equals, well, first I'd say red dot. Now, so this is the mesh renderer on the cube, right? So now dot color. Um, let me just check real quick. We actually might have had, to, oh, here we go, dot material and then dot color. Get confused on that sometimes because what you basically have to do here is sometimes you'll see people do cube so the game object dot renderer or dot mesh renderer anyway uh, sometimes they'll reference it straight from here the game object dot the game dot game object and then dot renderer or mesh renderer or this I want to get this right so I can actually show you guys it. Um, anyway, basically, uh, there are ways to do that. I just forget off the top of my head. But once we have access, okay, to this mesh renderer, right? We're saying we're saying the dot material of this mesh renderer, and then dot color equals, and now we're going to say color dot red. Okay, and what this is going to do here is this going to change. Well, let me actually show you what it's going to do. We'll go in here, we'll hit play. Oh, and our script isn't attached to anything. So that would help. Let's see here. It wants a cube, we'll give it a cube. You'll notice, why is the cube falling? That's because we have gravity enabled. Well, how do we change that? So first you'll see it's red. But our cube's falling, I don't want the cube to fall, and I could just go to the cube and say, uh, disable gravity. But let's say I just want to do everything through code today. Uh, what I'm actually going to do here is I'm going to say rigid underscore cube dot enabled, uh, sorry, dot gravity. Let's see here, rigid dot cube dot gravity. So there's a few ways I could actually handle it. Uh, gravity, gravity, gravity. Oh, dot use gravity, okay. That would make more sense. Dot use gravity, right, equals false. So let's take a look at what that does. Now, notice that our cube is still falling, but gravity's unchecked. So why is this? It's a good question. But one way we could fix this is to freeze the constraints, right? So, and we could also do that from code. Anyway, the box collider as well could be edited through code with this here. So I'll let you guys actually play around with that because I'm actually going a little bit over time with this tutorial. But thanks for watching, guys. Please leave your comments below. Uh, don't forget to like and subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next tutorial.